Hello there everyone, Ashton Flash here and welcome on into my compilation collection video of all my reviews for Jurassic World Dominion. You could check out the different chapters if you want to hop around. I know the 4 plus sets aren't a lot of people's favorites, but uh, I've compiled them all. I've done this for a couple of different sets already this year, so again... Let me know your thoughts, I've cut out some bits, and if you were wondering, and I do mention it a lot, I remember saying, oh, I'm going to do a combination video connecting this to this set. That is linked at the end if you're interested, as well as in the description uh, for connecting a couple of the different sets, because they're really crazy. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's go through all the sets. This is set number 30390, and this is called the Dinosaur Market. It has 34 pieces and is retailing for... Four ninety nine Canadian, I believe that. I don't know if Polybags and Minifigure Series are the same price like they are um, with Canada and the US. I think it might be a dollar cheaper for Polybags in the US. Anyways, this was picked up at Toys R Us. And uh, the set, it, it's fine. Like, th th there's nothing special going on here if I remove the figure. This is like the main part of the build. It's a little marketplace. You can see in the combination video, I actually try and swap this out with the other little market section. But you've got like a little light here to sort of keep the egg warm, I guess, to hatch, as well as the tiles here. Like, they're pretty rare. Uh, I looked into like potentially just building this without getting. Uh, the actual poly bag, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool to get those pieces there in that color. Here is uh, the marketplace seller, and he's got this cool amber piece there with the mosquito in it. I love that transparent brick. It appears in a ton of the different sets. Uh, the beanie here actually does cover up a back uh, head a face printing there, which has this angry expression, and you've got a hoodie printed there as well. And also included is this little baby dino. Again, nothing new here. This is a print that we've gotten before for Jurassic World. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the dinosaur market. I think that it's a fine poly bag. It sort of adds to your expansion of the black market from the two sets that we have, as well as it's a variant. Like, this dinosaur doesn't appear in any of the Jurassic World Dominion sets, so it's cool if you want another type of dinosaur. Set number 76943. This is the Pteranodon Chase. It has 94 pieces, retailing for $19.99 USD or $24.99 Canadian. And this is very much a 4 plus set, which you will see as we go through here. But uh, got some exclusive figures, which we'll talk about as well. So let's go ahead and let's jump on into things. And here's the Pteranodon. And it looks really cool. Like, I've never had one before. And again, like the wing pieces, like, it's not new, I don't believe, for any of the pieces. But this color is exclusive to Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, on the back there, you do actually have a little spot that you could actually, like, I guess, attach uh, to something like. Um, if you wanted to build like some sort of flying like with transparent pieces you could attach it that way It could also grab on if you want to fish like that with its feet You could also put the fish directly in the middle of the mouth Which I think looks really cool that you sort of have that ability especially with the divots in the mouth Like it's it's definitely like it fits in so perfectly You could also take the crab and kind of have it holding on to the side there as well which I think is really cool. Anyways, the way that this works is the back part there actually opens up. The top part lifts up. Uh, this never moves, and you just close the top part down on the bottom part there. So really cool. The wingspan as well, they can flap. Underneath, you do have two spots to actually attach different like transparent pieces if you wanted to build up and have this flying. Uh, in terms of prints, I believe it's just the exact same print repeated on both sides of the head. Here is the, like, seafood shack, I guess we'll call it. I think it's really cool, just, like, the 4 plusness of it kind of takes away, of course, but, like, the canopy there, it's fine with dark red and yellow. Love this 2x4 tile. That is really awesome to me. That is so, so cool. I love that. That, like, that's going to be used in so many different things. Like, I definitely see an appeal here. What you could do is you could take some of the different seafood. So you're meant to, like, take the crab there if you want to, as well as you could put, like, the fishing rod. That's meant to be what that is. And then also this little lasso as well. You do have another fish, which you could put in that little basket. You got a side little palm tree there. Also, I think this is meant to be a little bench for you to sit them and just kind of look out into the ocean. Uh, kind of interesting. If I spin it around here, you'll see just a simple sort of build. There's nothing going on here in the back. And um, yeah, again, you've got a little dock here kind of like that. I, I guess you kind of just have to like 
jump across um, to actually go and stand out on the outside here on the pier. But yeah, it's small, it's simple, it's very 4 plus. Here's the 4 plus car, the little Jeep. Uh, it, it's fine, it's it's very interesting uh, using those pieces there to make this huge like Jeep. It drives very smoothly, you've got a printed grill and lights there in the front. And then if you were, you, and then you could also take Owen there and sit him on the inside. Uh, he sits very nicely on the inside. It's very tall uh, to just kind of get up, like if you put a minifigure next to it. It's a very tall looking vehicle. Um, you do have a steering wheel on the inside there, as well as a pair of binoculars to spot uh, the flying uh, different creatures and even, I guess, looking out into the ocean. Here is the exclusive Owen Grady to the set. He comes with this plaid shirt which doesn't appear in any other ones. All of the four plus ones have the exact same outfit for him, but the other four plus one has a really cool variant of this where he's got a jacket over this. Really love that, so cool. Uh, the face, like I've said, always is, they've just really captured Chris Pratt's likeness there, looks great. On the back, we've got this upset expression and some really detailed back printing there as well. Also included with Owen was this lasso, which I almost forgot to show. And I like, I don't know what you're trying to do. Like he's in a Jeep. It doesn't make sense. They're kind of mashing two scenes together. We've seen him from the trailer like he's on a horse trying to chase down a bunch of different dinosaurs. So it doesn't make sense to sort of have this like what is he going to do like jump off the Jeep and sort of like loop onto this like I don't really like I, I don't know what quite to do. Even the name of the set. It's the Pteranodon Chase. And here's Maisie, and I actually watched like the latest featurette. I really think that they did a bad job with her. Like I just, I don't even think like the hair color's right. I think I would have gone with medium nougat and she's still very short. So like I said in the other video, she probably should be using mid legs here, I think. Um, but nonetheless, like the torso is very detailed. I really appreciate that. I think they captured that really well from the movie. Uh, the face, I think it works fine and it would work with a different hair color as well. But removing this hair here, if I spin it around, you can see she's got this angry expression and a lion or something printing on the back there. Well, yeah, have it everyone. That is my review of the Pteranodon Chase. I, I, I don't know. It, it's fine. Like, I don't particularly think that there's a lot to even talk about. Like, it's just a small four plus set. It's very straightforward. The figures here that you're getting, if you don't want to get some of the other sets, and getting this exclusive Owen's really good. Same with the Pteranodon. Like, it's a great variant for it. Really awesome. But the rest of it, like, it's really just for parts. There's no play features really going on here at all, even compared to like the other four plus set. Like, there's just more to do in that other one. So it's fine. I think that maybe knock off five bucks off this, and I think it'll, it'll be a lot more well-received, I'd say, but that's probably the case with most Jurassic World sets. Set number 76944. This is the T-Rex Dinosaur Breakout. has 140 pieces, retailing for $49.99 USD or $64.99 Canadian. This is a four-plus set, as you saw in the thumbnail. Now, this isn't the only set with this name in this Jurassic World Dominion wave, and... It's hard not to compare it, I think, to the other set, since there is a little bit more that you're getting with it. So we'll talk about all that, kind of give my final thoughts at the end. And uh, first, I think we need to look at the set. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Here's the T-Rex included in the set. And I don't think that this is anything from the movie this looks to be, especially the color choices here. Definitely something that Lego created for this 4 Plus set. Again, it's a colorful dinosaur to uh, draw kids into the set. I think it's really good. Um, it's a very detailed looking dinosaur. We will compare it in a separate video, actually looking at all the dinosaurs. So we'll compare it to the other one in that. But uh, you can rotate it up and down a little bit here as well as the feet are able to actually move as well so you could have it like trying to stand there are actually holes on the bottom for you to attach it to studs so you can actually have it standing on one foot because otherwise it kind of just tips on over the little arms here they're fine i think they work really well here for uh the t-rex i've never had a problem with it the tail in the back is actually able to be rotated completely around although you kind of want to keep it there anyway because of the pattern here from the back or from the head really all the way down to the tail the mouth actually only has one like real lock option there which is completely open there there is one that you can kind of put midway through there which you could also do it kind of you just have to like leave it there but the slightest movement and it will actually close i like how it has an overbite there you could definitely see that how the front teeth are actually above the bottom teeth 
And spinning it around here on the side, I'm just trying to like memorize this to see if you notice any of the details there, if they are different. It does look to be a complete reflection there, even on the head in terms of the design of the pattern and everything. Same here, I was looking at all the spots and everything. Let me know if you notice a difference on the legs there. Again, pretty sure it's the exact same, which is fine. It's just some of the other dinosaurs have unique printing on the opposite side, so it does add a little bit of, you know, uniqueness, I think, to the dinosaurs. You've also got a total of eight studs there on the back. So this place that is meant to be like some facility or, or I guess location where the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services have been collecting dinosaurs, I believe. And I'm just reading what the badge says there. You'll see it when we take a look at the helicopter, which is what I'm reading this off of. It also says underneath the Department of the Interior. Not sure what that means. Uh, let me know if you know. Uh, anyways, down below here, uh, you've got a turkey leg there. And I think that's meant to be... Like, maybe a figure can, like, grab it and lure dinosaurs into different pens and things like that. Although, there isn't really a pen in this set. You could see it's 4+, plus. it screams 4+. plus. What I do like here is this fence. Because it's sort of using the exact same design as the 18+, plus set that's launching from Jurassic Park. Same name, by the way. Uh, anyways, I think it could have used one more of them. Just because, like, it doesn't look like much of a fence. Especially if... Like, what are you trying to keep out there? Are you trying to keep dinosaurs out or in? You, you know, I guess it'll keep the T-Rex in, kind of, height-wise, but, like, minifigures, they, they jump on through. You do have the ability if you want to, and I could raise this up a bit to actually, you know, kind of make it look more like a fence um, and have, like, the ground almost as the bottom barrier. And I'll spin it around here just to show you there is literally nothing going on in the inside. There's no computer panels. No, nothing. And I think that's kind of a letdown. You do have the satellite dish there that can rotate without falling off uh, completely 360. Then you've also got a walkie-talkie attached there. You could put like a fire extinguisher or some of the other accessories included in the set if you want. Or the giant turkey leg up there. You've also got this logo, like I said before, we'll look at closer in a second. And this fence, you could kind of rotate it and kind of make this your own. Like, you see what I'm doing here? Like, you can kind of swap it out like that. You could have it even going this way, have the fence. All right, let's try and have the T-Rex break through here. And you just kind of, you know, you just kind of move that. Like, it's it's kind of tough. You could also hold on to the wire like I just did and pull it forward and it'll just snap out there, which is an alternative. But also, of course, the other thing that you are sort of meant to do more of is this is meant to be like either a barricade because there looks like they're in an airport uh, from the boxer, but they smash on through. Very easy to break. It takes no effort at all. It's just sitting on these two studs on each side. Here's the other section, and this is like a helicopter landing part. And what you could do as well, I'm just noticing there are some studs there. I don't know if you're meant to do this, but I'm going to do this anyways. You could put the fence here and actually attach it if you want to to either side and have the fence attached to this helicopter spot. And the fence will break off a lot better since it's only attached there to the one stud. I, I don't know. It doesn't say to do that anywhere, I don't believe. Um, anyways, you've got a ladder here, which can flip up if you want. I also was just playing around with this. I had the T-Rex lying down there, and you could just kind of put... <laughs> I don't know why I saw the gap. Like, let's fill it. So, probably better yet, it's meant for this car. It is four studs wide on the inside there. You could completely park it on inside. So what you could do as well is you take your helicopter and you place it on down there. And it won't move because it's actually locked on both sides of the H. As well as the bottom part there is actually hooking into the studs, the four studs on each side. So it won't move. It will slide off though like that. Here's a little car. It's 4 plus build. Definitely it is very evident there. It's using very old wheels there, which is really interesting. I haven't I don't know when the last set was that I built that had that. In this little crate, you've got a tan egg. I don't know if that's meant to be one of the T-Rex eggs. I have like that that's kind of what it's implied to be because you have like Owen driving this and sort of having the T-Rex chase it through. Uh, it is very easy to just remove this container. You can kind of store it in the back, I guess, if you want to. Here's the helicopter build. Again, you sort of get a better look there at that tile. It's printed uh, three different times in the set. Now, uh, on the front of the box, it actually has the light on this side. It's very easy to actually remove and put on the other side there. It's just 
really simple. Again, it's a four plus set. It's not meant to be complicated builds or anything to remove. So you could swap the light and put it there. You can angle it up and down. Also lifting up the cockpit there, you could see that you've got this little control panel as well as a seat. And you've also got this back hatch, which is cool because a lot of times in four plus sets, sometimes they're incomplete. So I like that they have that there to close it on up. And then of course, you've also got the rotating helicopter blades. I'm gonna say it, this is the greatest Owen Grady we've ever gotten. I love this figure. It is really awesome. I like this is just so detailed. You've got the plaid underneath. You've got this cool trench coat. Would have loved if it was duo molded, but even rain doesn't have that either. I love the back torso there. Printing looks great. I also wonder, is this the same jacket? I don't think it is because I'm just looking at rain. I've got him still in front of me here from the other reviews. It doesn't look like it's the same jacket. It is very different besides just the coloring there, but still like looks great he's also got a flare and he's also luring away a t-rex sort of very reminiscent to alan grant from jurassic park the face it's fine it's star lords it's 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 captures his face i guess first it was owen grady but first uh it captures his face so well chris pratt's expressions there this is zia or zaya rodriguez and uh, it's cool i like the torso is really detailed i don't know if this is from like specifically the movie or not like it looks like it could have appeared in other sets i even searched up the piece couldn't find anything the hair and face over are both monica's from friends so it's kind of weird to see her here especially since like ross is a paleontologist anyways friends people will appreciate that um but you've also got some printing there Tour 1980 something. So I guess this is a band shirt. I don't know. She's also got the trank gun there with the yellow needle. And if I remove the hair there, you could see if I spin it around, she's got this upset or maybe concentrating expression there and some back printing as well. And here we have a wildlife guard. No, not a wild space lifeguard, a wildlife guard. You joke, a funny joke. Oh, anyways, <laughs> the torso, I was like, is that Riddler's from the Batman? But then I realized it does have a badge there. So no, it also has a bit of a shine slash mark there where it almost looks like there's a name printed on there, but I don't know what's up with that. It's very detailed. The face, I believe, was first used for Star Wars. I think the headset there piece works really well. It's from an Imperial officer. On the back, very detailed printing. And you've got the cap in dark green, which is cool. Also included is a fire extinguisher. Well, there you have it everyone that is everything included in this set the t-rex dinosaur breakout it's like i said before it's hard not to compare it to the other t-rex scent that one has 466 pieces this has 140 that one retails for 79.99 usd this one for 49.99 usd i'm not one for a price to piece ratio especially when it comes to jurassic world sets since dinosaurs on their own are almost like their own toy if you were to get it separately from a different company but comparing the two, I don't think this is the way to go. I love the location. I think it's a really fun location, and I'm excited to see it in the film. I just don't think that comparing the two, you got to go with the other one for the vehicle build, the playset build, the dinosaur, getting another dinosaur, the figures as well. Set number 76945. This is the Atrociraptor Dinosaur Bike Chase. It has 169 pieces as retailing for $19.99 USD or $24.99 Canadian. I'm really excited to take a look at this. Like it's a small set. I I'm there's a couple of different play features, so let's go ahead and let's take a closer look. Alright, so here's the main build of this, and like I said, it does connect to another building, and I really like that. I love when play sets can connect across different sets in the wave, and you can see that there with this little hand part to actually attach. This little skull here is really interesting. It too actually is able to be attached to something in that other set. Uh, in the barrel, there's literally nothing. Um, I can't even, can't even remove that. That's really in there. So yeah, it's just a little crate nothing in there except for the skull i'm not sure like what these two pillars are but uh they're there for some reason i guess just texture you could see like the different masonry bricks and things like that used throughout this set here and down there and over there and even over there on the other side so i think that's cool it gives it that sort of old effect i'm not sure like what the exact location is of this it's almost like a train station but uh, over here on the side you can see that there's actually this little almost like a, a market booth, I want to call it, because they're selling the ambers and everything, but this is actually removable. As you can see, it's just that easy to actually remove. So it sits on top of that plate there, and you can remove it. Now, there is actually another market section 
coming. I'm not like I think this is meant to be like a black market of selling dinosaurs now that they're like out in the world. And I believe like uh, there's another poly bag coming. So I'm not sure if it'll fit there um, when I get my hands on that because I want to take a look at all the Jurassic World Dominion sets. I'll for sure try and fit it there. So stay tuned for that, I guess. Like the title of the set says, it is a chase. So what you do is you have Owen drive on through in the motorcycle and then you have the Atrociraptor come on through. And I guess it's not actually that height like it can walk underneath. But I think the idea is that you're actually meant to crash on through. Now, don't hit this side because it's actually attached firmly. Like, this side is not meant to fall off. It's only that side of the archway. What, but what I don't get is, as you saw there, it doesn't make that fence there in the back launch so maybe you just have to do that separately but that is also meant to actually fall off and it's just attached um with to these two studs there so you just put it back it's very easy to rebuild and just a simple little archway but it gets the job done uh, if i spin it around here on the back you could see that there's actually some more masonry bricks as well as this light i don't know if it's also meant to be almost like a poker or something like an electric staff and on this side, you'll see there's actually this gear here. And I'm not sure if you saw what that actually did, but uh, I'm going to continue to spin it around here. Um, and you can see now we're back on the front. And what you do is you take one of the baby dinosaurs and you can actually put them on there. And you're meant to actually spin the back. And it's meant to almost give it like the effect that they're running. So what you can also do is if I space this out a little bit more there and I take the other one as well, what you can do is you can almost have them chasing each other around in a circle. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't move as smooth as some other gear. So you really have to keep turning it to get like a full 360 around. It's a cute idea. I just think that it's a little too tight with the build that they have going on there, but it's fun. And here is the side market build. And I think it's cute. Like what that's meant to be is it's a little pen to put one of the baby dinosaurs on the inside there. And it's an interesting use of like the grill pieces. You can see that you've got the different ambers there and they're still in attached to like a bit of the rocks. And what's really cool, I love that that brick piece there, the amber. It appears in a couple of different sets, but you've got the mosquito stuck inside, very iconic, of course. And then you've got some some more amber there on the other one. So I like how they kind of have it, um, not as refined, I guess, but uh, sort of breaking that as I uh, twist that. But yeah, it's fine for what this is. So here is the motorcycle, very basic. Um, I, I don't really have too much to say. It's a Lego motorcycle. It drives very smoothly. Uh, this is not exclusive, I don't think, or anything like that. Of course, city sets and all that get this sort of bike all the time. Here's the Atrociraptor, and I think that this is what is exciting a lot of people with this set, besides the baby dinos. Um, but this is a really cool looking dinosaur. I really love it. It's interesting that the body it's so similar to the, the Dilophosaurus. The tail shape is a little different, but in terms of the arms there, you see the claws. Same with the feet, how they both have the inside claw sticking up. It's like the exact same piece, except for the tail is a little bit thicker on the Dilophosaurus, I think. This, I believe, was the first time we got this little tiny jaw, um, because the mouth for this is actually able to be open up there and that's about as far as it can go it does have not it doesn't i thought it had one in between completely open and not but it's very cool you've got a stud on top just like the dilophosaurus i love the printing there how that goes around open up there we go with the jaw you can see when you open that that the teeth are white now here they are tan so they color them tan which means that they can do that and if I slide the box on inside here, you can see that the teeth really could have used the tan. And I think that's a bit of a shame that they missed out on doing that, but it's still fine. It looks really cool. Of course, there is another Atrociraptor actually in the set uh, that can connect with this. And here is Owen Grady. And this isn't an exclusive version for him or anything. It's not even exclusive to Jurassic World Dominion. It's quite an old figure, actually. The torso printing and everything, nothing's new here, but it, it's still fine. I love the face. I think they've really captured my wish that with this new movie, we could have maybe gotten a new expression that, of course, they could then use for him in the Guardians movies and advent calendar that we're supposedly getting but 
It's still fine. I, I, I think they really captured Chris Pratt's facial expressions and facial hair. Here's Rain Delacourt, and I hate that this figure is in this set, and I'll tell you why. A lot of times when LEGO does combining sets, they're very mindful of, like if you look at the last wave of Ninjago, they didn't put any of the ninjas in both the sets that can combine. Here, this is the exact same character, exact same outfit that appears in the set that you combine. So I'm not a fan of that. But, however, this figure is very cool. I love the leg printing. It is very detailed. Could have been dual molded. Uh, you kind of notice how the trench coat doesn't continue down there from the sides. But I think like it, the torso is so detailed as well as his face there. I love getting the hair here in reddish brown. I think that's really cool. Not sure if I've ever gotten that. But the stubble there with like the raptor, maybe that's a snake tattoo. It almost looks like a snake because of the tongue, but uh, it has to be a dinosaur, right? Anyways, I think the face is really great. Uh, you could even, if you take some nail polish remover, if you want to remove the tattoo, you could do that too. Uh, ha -ha. And uh, on the back here, he does have this sort of menacing grin. I assume he is the villain here. Um, he also comes with this trank gun uh, with a yellow needle piece. I'm sure some of you want to see a 360 of the little baby dino. So that is what that looks like there. And on the top here, you can see that you've actually got uh, some dark red printing there. And here's the other baby dino. They're really colorful. Like the purple and the dark orange, I think look great. And you've got some white stripes. And honestly, the printing on that's not too bad. Like the white is actually white. It's it's not really this light purple. It's, it's not as bad as some other examples I could think of from Lego's history, but it's cool. I, I really like these little babies. They have it everyone, that is my review of the Atrociraptor Dinosaur Bike Chase. And I think this is a really solid set for $20. You're getting uh, two exclusive dinos because of course one of the baby ones do appear in the poly bag, but I'm not sure how rare that'll be. And again, none of the figures here are exclusive, but I do like that it can combine with that other set, which I'm really excited to build the other one and combine that. So stay tuned for that review. Set number 76946, this is Blue and Beta Velociraptor Capture. As 181 pieces and is retailing for $29.99 USD or $34.99 Canadian. It's, I don't know, we'll, I'll talk about it towards the end once we look at everything. So let's go ahead, let's jump into things. So we're going to start with Blue and Beta because they are the name of the set. And here we go. They're both here. And that's just to give you a bit of a scale. We'll look at Beta a little bit closer in a second. But Blue is here and it's using the exact same Raptor pieces that we've gotten before. Nothing new going on here. The legs and everything allow you to actually pose it a little bit um, as well as the arms can actually move. You do have some spots underneath for you to actually attach it to some studs. You could kind of just angle them up like they're listening, angle it down and turn the head completely around 360. And then also here, you do have the mouth that can actually open up. And I love how the teeth are actually colored tan. That really adds a lot to it versus it just being the same color as the head, which is what some other dinosaurs have had, unfortunately, that we've looked at already. Now the tail pattern and everything, it's really detailed. I'm not too sure I like the color scheme for this, to be honest. Um, I feel like sand blue maybe would have been better. I don't know. It, it's hard to tell. Every lighting picture sort of gives it a different look. Um, but let me know down below, like, what color do you think is, has been the best blue that we've gotten? I really love uh, the Fallen Kingdom one. Anyways, uh, you could see here, I'm just trying to take note. Uh, it is actually different. If you look at the head printing there, you could see how the blue stripe actually goes past the eye, where here it stops before that. I'm um, just trying to memorize the back part here um, just looking at all the specs and everything if I flip it around it does look like it is reflected completely the exact same um, so yeah uh, that's okay I don't have the biggest problem with that um, but it's just cool when they do things like the head I think that looks great you've also got a spot there on the back where you can like put a build or some figures or something like that and here's little beta and I love how they've like taken the regular raptor design here like blue and have shrunk it down that is so cool I think in the past like they've used the baby dino pieces that they've invented but here we've almost got like this teenager one I guess like not fully grown but not a little baby which I think is so cute it's also got the exact same patterns if you notice as blue like if I take blue here and just to show you you could see how the stripe there doesn't go all the way to the eye and then when you flip it around on the other side it does go past the eye um, so I think that's really interesting I'm not sure um, biology wise uh, it's just kind of interesting <laughs> that uh, its offspring is like pretty similar in design. So love that. Love the little prints there on the side as well on the leg. The same sort of 
design that blue had in the tail part there too and i'm just trying to notice it does look like that is the same on each side it's hard to tell but i'm pretty sure it's the same uh you do have two little spots there for you to actually attach it to a stud either foot there i like how that is actually posed again you've got little you got the little baby arms and i think this is really cool and i guarantee you in future jurassic world sets not tied to like a movie or something like that we are going to continue to see this piece used over and over again but in new colors and things like that just like they've done with the baby dino which looks so so cool and then that actually leads us right into this. This is the cage build, and it's actually a really small little cage. It works really cool. You'll see you can open it up completely, so it's almost like a trap that you've set, and a little beta comes up, and it actually closes up completely. Uh, you lure it in with a giant turkey leg, and then you actually take this little clip part there, and you lock beta inside if it decides to attach. There we go. So it is now stuck inside here and what you do is you take this which is really cool it's almost like camouflage there with the leaves you take that and you put it in the back of this truck and it just sits there loosely but the idea of this whole set is that you're chasing down uh rain who has captured little beta and put it in the back of the truck there and you can see it just sits on top of the hubcaps there which looks really great honestly this is a solid car could be used for city sets and things like that there's no stickers or anything like for biosyn like the company or anything to like make it just jurassic world there's no indication for that really so i really like that there's no license plate either so that's a bit of a shame but i like the front grill it's fine it's a very basic set you do have a spot there a bit of ledge to sort of stand on but uh, yeah i really like the back and here's what it looks like from the back as well Again, no license plate. It does drive very smoothly, and this part here does remove so that you could take rain if you want to, and of course, put him on the inside here. And you've got a little bit of a back window there as well, and the rear, and as well as the side mirrors. So as he is being chased, of course, not just by Blue, you also have this little ramp where you take Maisie and you put her on this like off-road bike and you just sort of have her driving over uh, this little ramp and driving mid-air to like, I guess, crash into the truck and knock the cage loose. It's a very small little build. I would have liked to have that WOG piece that's appeared in like Mario and things like that and a ton of other sets would have just been a nice little addition to detail here because it is sort of so simple. But uh, yeah, small little build also the bike uh, it does again drive very smoothly it's nothing new here for this bike though here is Maisie and she is technically this version of her I guess is exclusive to this scent because of the beanie and the hair that's actually using the piece from hidden side but with a black beanie and the hair which looks really awesome I don't know I'm pretty sure she's still like a teenager at this point so I would have preferred if she had mid legs maybe I don't know we'll have to wait and see for the movie and, and I haven't taken too close a look at the trailers and pictures I don't want to spoil it uh, for myself but anyways um, my point with this is I think mid legs maybe could have worked with her um, even just it's fun to have variations of mid legs across different themes uh, but nonetheless it still looks really cool I love this beanie on the back there you could see it almost looks like a, a lion on the back of this jacket. And then if I were to remove the beanie here, you could see her face, which has been used for Hermione, Pepper Potts, and just a ton of different people. Um, and she's got this angry expression here on the back as well. And here is Rain Delacorte. And before you skip on past, if you've watched the other Jurassic World videos, this is actually a brand new exclusive figure. You could see here that the torso is actually brand new. If I were to compare it to the other ones that we have, of him you could see how the outfit there is different and uh, i believe let's check the jacket the jacket back printing is the same so i guess the trench coat there that he's wearing you could see how it carries over to the legs as well um it's actually the exact same so don't have a problem with that but i love the idea that this jacket has like he's just wearing it on top of all these different shirts uh, you got a glimpse of the second face print there which is this like smirk with uh his teeth showing and then on the front uh going back to this i've said this before in the other times but it's really great looking face print if you were to like nail polish remover that tattoo whatever that is on his face um it would like make for a really good like bucky barnes or someone else but anyways he also comes with the trank dart which also all of the other ones have come with with a yellow needle 
Well, they have it, everyone. That is my review of the LEGO Jurassic World Blue and Beta Velociraptor Capture. I think it's a fun set. I think that the price for it, however, is a little too expensive. I think even knocking $5 off this set would have gone a long way. It's set number 76947. This is the Quetzalcoatlus plain ambush i listen i i just listened to the audio of google telling me how to say it if i didn't say it right let me know down below help me with the engagement spell it out phonetically you know that's why a lot of the videos are doing well i think for these because you guys help by trying to correct me anyways um this is retailing for 39.99 usd or 49.99 canadian it has 306 pieces it's a really interesting set honestly like it's very unique i'm trying to like look back at jurassic world i don't see any plane build quite like this in any lego set and i could be wrong correct me about that but it's really cool and unique same with this dinosaur so Let's jump into things. So this is really cool. This is the very first time that the Quetzalcoatlus, again, <laughs> I'm trying here. It's a really weird name. It's a weird spelling too. Anyways, um, it, it's the first time that we're getting this dinosaur. And it's really cool and unique. Like, I, I'm gonna be honest, this was not a set I was looking forward to. As I built this, as I built the plane, it really turned me around. Like, this is such a unique looking dinosaur in general. But then, of course, like, to see it here in Lego form is really awesome. This long, again, I, I'm, I apologize with my anatomy of dinosaurs, but it is very, it's like a beak. And it, it is really cool. I really love how that can actually clamp. The furthest it can go is all the way like that. But you can see it is actually beginning to detach. So you don't want to do that. Um, but it does snap there. That is actually where it stops. Um, it is really, really cool. We'll zoom in in a second because it is so large. I do want to zoom in on the detail, but it can't actually flap its wings like this. The wing piece is actually brand new, I believe, because I looked at all the past Jurassic World sets. But I think that the whole body here, I believe, is new. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but really cool looking back here. You've got uh, a total of eight studs that you could put uh, stuff on if you want to put build, if you want to put figures, riding it. Underneath, this is where it gets interesting for any mock builders, you actually have a spot right there, uh, two different stud holes where you could actually like put transparent pieces so that if you want, you could build it up so that it can actually fly. So zooming on in here, you could see just how detailed the face is here for this. It's so cool. I really love the feathers there. I think they're not scales, they're, they're feathers almost. And again, just how it's dual molded. I don't know if it's triple. I assume that it, I, I, I'm not sure. Let's open actually up the mouth. You can see it's actually not at all dual molded, but that's how good the printing is that it does make you think that. Um, so really love that. Love the blue there. And if I flip it around, it's hard to tell, but I think, yeah, it's just reflected. And here's the wing pattern as well. Um, again, if I have to look closely, uh, it does look to be the exact same, just reflected. One other thing that I saw here was that the back actually has a spot for the feet to grab onto something. Now, this is an extra tube piece uh, from the largest Jurassic World Dominion set, and I just used that there. So, cool that it could grab things as well. So here's the plane, and I just tried to read the description to see if you could, uh, like if there was an official name for it or something, but uh, to my knowledge, I don't think there is. I did something kind of reckless, and surprisingly, it all stayed together. That is how strong the build is. When I was moving this over here, I grabbed it by the back here. And uh, don't twist it, but it was actually sturdy enough uh, to actually hold on for a bit. So don't do what I just do did. Uh, I guess you could see the undercarriage here. Uh, we'll start with that, I guess. Um, it's actually really cool. One of my favorite things about this is the whole design of this because having, again, I, I'm not a plane expert either, but having the wheels there that elongated is really cool. And I like how uh, the, the whole shape of this, like having this back part here is so unique to any plane that I can think of um, from Lego. So that is really cool. The color scheme as well, there's a lot going on here. You've got dark red, you've got the uh, olive green, you've got dark blue and the grays, the blacks. It's really cool. Like it's a very solid plane, but there's actually a, a few play features with this. As the plane's flying, of course, it says in the title, it's an ambush. It actually can be attacked. And what you do is you just push down on the propellers and they actually will detach there uh, from that little clip. So it's really easy to put back, but you just push down there on both of them. They can actually fall apart. As well as if you really want to, you can remove the wheels really simply like that. And it also said the cargo hold. 
Um, I assume what you can do with that, because it's quite simple, is you just rip this off. I don't know. It, it doesn't, there's no play feature really for that to happen, but you can actually also drop the cargo load, which is this really small thing, which we'll take a look at in a second. But uh, yeah, it's really interesting that uh, they say that. You could also probably rip off the top here as well. So there's a lot you can do to damage this, which I really like. And if you want to also, it's a little more unrealistic, I guess, but the whole front cockpit, of course, does come off as well. So here we're zooming on in and you can see the art on the side of the plane. It's really cool. It says Midnight Oiler. It might say Midlight, but that doesn't make sense. So I, I'm going to assume that it's that. Um, again, I haven't written in, in cursive in a very long time. The propeller here, really, really smooth. The camera actually isn't even picking up as, as fast as this is going, which is pretty crazy. You could see it more, or maybe that's how good the camera is. I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, over here on the side, uh, you have that just reversed. Um, but then on top, we have the number 3807. And I looked up what Lego set that was, and I've literally never seen that set before. I don't know if it was something special, maybe to the designer. Maybe it was their first Lego set. I, I'm not sure. Maybe that's something with Jurassic World. I really don't have the answer to that. Uh, on the front part here, you do have uh, a sticker there on the side, a sticker there on the front, and on this side as well. Now, removing this, it's really simple to do, and you actually have spots for some minifigures it's a shame you could almost fit all three of them or maybe you are able to no i don't there's no way you can uh because they would be side by side uh but that's really cool that you can actually do that i i think uh let's take the cockpit here and yeah there's definitely enough space there for that so i really appreciate that they had that in mind um on the inside there's really not too much going on here like there's no control panel or anything you've just got again the seats and this little device here to uh, i guess go up and down with the plane and like you saw before there is actually this little crate and you could throw that on inside and uh, there's quite a lot of room in there i was reading the description it actually says you could fit the motorcycle from another set in this so i love the fact that they thought about that we are doing a combining video once all the reviews are done so this is now going to be combining it, which I didn't know was something you could do. We'll look at that in a bit. But uh, in the back there, again, you could put the figures just loosely inside. There's actually a lot more room than you think because that yellow part there, you could see how far that is. Like, it looks like a small plane, but in reality, that's a really deep plane. Like, that's a total of eight studs deep plus the window part making it nine. So really, really deep plane. I, I appreciate that. Here's this little spot and you've got a wrench, a flashlight, as well as a fire extinguisher. Just something simple. Here is Kayla Watts. And I believe she is a pilot, uh, given the fact that she is piloting the plane and a helicopter in another set and just her outfit looks very piloty. Um, but it's interesting to see her here appearing in the set. Of course, it makes sense. She's piloting a plane, but unfortunately, She's not exclusive, and none of the figures in the set are, which I think is a really big drawback. Uh, the torso printing, really extremely detailed. Like, I love just the different colors and everything that you've got there with the sand green, the dark green, the dark tan, the light tan, all of it to make the fur effect and everything. I, I really appreciate that, and uh, using the Black Widow hair piece here. I think is, it, it's cool to see in medium nougat. I, when was the last time? Captain Marvel, I think. The face here looks pretty good. And then on the back, she does have this sort of angry expression there. Uh, and she's got some back torso printing there as well. Owen Grady, wh what am I going to do with you, man? This figure, I, I think it's, it's becoming one of the figures that I have the most in my collection after this wave. He appears in this outfit so many times, and it's really frustrating because there's two really cool outfits, and they are locked behind four plus sets. Would have been awesome to see here in this one, but nonetheless, it is a fine figure. I, I think that my review of this is going down as it continues. Also, this isn't even from Jurassic World Dominion. It's already appeared in other Jurassic World sets, so... Anyways, the face is really good and uh, it, it captures his likeness, I think, super, super well. And if I spin it around here on the back, you could see he has this upset expression. Claire Deering, this is the third and final set that she appears in this outfit in. Again, it, it's not rare. It's not exclusive at all. She does have an exclusive outfit to another set. It's a retail exclusive. Haven't found that one just yet. But anyways, the torso, it's fine. I, I think that this torso isn't as bad as some of the other ones. I don't know. It has this weird speckle effect. You can definitely still see that there. I have no clue what's going on if that's a problem with printing dark red on teal. Um, the face, again, like I've said in the other reviews, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I, I feel like it, 
kind of captures her likeness, but I don't know. She's got this scared expression here on the back, and she's got some back torso printing as well. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is the Quetzalcoatlus Plain Ambush, and I don't know. I, I love the set, which is something that I rarely say, I think, when it comes to reviews, is that the set is fantastic, and the dinosaur is really cool. Awesome that it has all these new pieces in this one set. The figures are the biggest drawback to me. I think that, especially with Owen and Claire, they're just... It's so frustrating, honestly, with a big wave like this. Set number 76948. This is the T-Rex and Atrociraptor Dinosaur Breakout. It has a total of 466 pieces and is retailing for $79.99 USD or $109.99 Canadian. And honestly, I thought when I was looking up the price for this video, like recording, I thought it was going to be a lot more. I actually think that the value for this is quite good if you compare it to the other really big play set. So let's go ahead and let's jump into things. And here is the T-Rex. And again, I said this in the other video, but I've never really had one of these before this size. I've never built them. I have some sealed, but I've never built them before. This is the first time. And when you're opening it up, it comes in all these different parts and it's really cool. So like the jaw is one piece, the head's one piece, the two hands are another piece, the two legs, and then the tail. So all that you're kind of building this toy that you, maybe someone would buy separately for $15, $20. So I think that that's really interesting to think about. Like this is almost a toy like from Hasbro or something that you would be buying individually. So I think that's really cool when you look at it that way. And I don't particularly have a problem with some of the prices. We, we will touch on the other T-Rex set, believe me. I don't think color wise this is actually meant to be the T-Rex from the very first movie, especially since uh, it doesn't have like any scars or anything like I don't see any scratches from all the different battles that it's been a part of actually I think this is completely reflected on both sides so I'm not that big a fan of that I guess it's a little lazy on Lego's part I'm just trying to see the torso I think the torso is also an exact reflection so kind of a shame I really like that about uh, some of the other dinosaurs that they do take the time to design something different on the other side but it's okay how are you ever gonna see them at the same time I, I've been struggling trying to pose this thing but they do have the holes on the bottom so you can attach it to studs if you want uh, the head can spin all the way around and unfortunately it only has one jaw option so not a fan of that there should be a middle one I think this head kind of needs an update because of that but uh, it's cool how the teeth are underneath there I think that's cool to have a bit of an overbite you do have the little claw on arms there and again the legs you can kind of rotate that and the tail as well can spin all the way around but it's better to have it like that because the printing and everything lines up perfectly there and here is the atrociraptor this is actually a variant to the one that comes in the other set but the mouth can actually open up and it is a very similar build to the dilophosaurus which also appears in another jurassic world dominion set uh the tail is the only thing that's a little different here it's a little bit thicker, but the body, the hands and everything, there's no printing or anything on that, unfortunately. Uh, no printing on the teeth either, which the Dilophosaurus does have, and I think that they definitely could have used that. I said on the other video, could have used some tan teeth. In this one, I'd say could use some white teeth. You do have a stud on the top there, but I really love the printing. That's so cool. I really just love how detailed that is and how close that gets to the stud there on the top. Overall, very excited to have two of them in two different sets, especially one this colorful. So here is the main build, and it's quite interesting. I, Judging by the box art, I think it's like meant to be a train station, but it's something underground, um, and you've got these different sections, uh, different spots to like house your dinosaurs, and I think it's meant to be a black market as well, judging by the smaller set that actually connects right there on the end, but you have to wait for that video, because this one is already going to be long enough. You've got a ton of different stickers here just sort of adding to the texture of the bricks, which is also done by a combination of dark tan with reddish brown, but also light gray. It, it, I think it accomplishes it. I don't know about having the dark gray there to hold the lamps, but I like the lamp posts there and everything. The, I can bring the truck on in, and it is actually able to be driven through. Uh, it does seem to get stuck. I don't know if that's an intentional play feature, maybe so that the Atrociraptors can get loose, but you could also back it up right through there. Um, again, I can't really see from this angle what is hitting, but if I hold down on the front there, it won't detach. But uh, again, you could drive that through. And if you want to as well, of course, the T-Rex can come through the archway as well. But the T-Rex isn't actually supposed to be there. The T-Rex is supposed to 
to be in its cell, which is right over here. So let me show you the breaking out feature. Also, he, he's, he can kind of bend over if you wanted to and eat someone. So I don't know how effective this cage is, but I'm gonna hold this in the back here. And all you gotta do is, is just pull him in any direction and he'll break a ton of different things there. You can see everything that just fell apart. This back pillar, this part, the front door with uh, some stickers there on the top for like a warning. You've got this archway. This part here didn't break because it didn't go that way. But these pillars, these two will not break. But uh, there's a lot of destruction on that corner. All right, now that everything's back to normal, let's spin it around so you can see the back. There's nothing going on in the inside there. I don't know how they're feeding them. I guess just throwing them maybe live goats. I don't know that <laughs> they just reach over. But uh, on the back, you can see there's some more stickers here, which is unnecessary since you never see it. I'm not going to bother even changing the camera to an aerial view. There is nothing going on on the top there. You've got a flag for some reason, which also they're underground, so I don't know how that's flying. Uh, but you've also got a spider at the top and this little section there for you to do whatever. I don't know. There's nothing on top, which is, eh, they could have used some crates or something, but let's zoom on in here. Here is a little rack for eggs. Again, maybe it should just be up above. So it just kind of fills it out a little bit more. It's, I don't know. It's a little more cluttered than here as well, which it's fine. You've got some different ambers there. Unfortunately, we don't have the printed one with the mosquito on the inside. That's just a plain transparent uh, brick and then on the back there you also have like the body the tail some ribs also some spikes uh, With the head from the other set that you can actually attach to complete it So again, you got to check out that connecting video when I'm done with that So here is the truck and I actually this is a solid build Genuinely, I, I didn't I'm not a vehicle guy at all, but this is a really cool build I also like how it has this compartment and again when you combine it with the other set you can actually put two Atrociraptors inside there. That's what it's meant to do. So you'll see that in a second, but it's really cool Like I like the front grill. I like the lights and how they built that the whole arch there The wheels drive really smoothly because they are on the tan axles You've got a spot there if you really want to have a figure they can also hold on to the side there of course, the top is actually removable with the front window. Maybe it gets damaged or you just want to put a minifigure on the inside. You've just got a steering wheel, nothing too special there. But I do like the color. Maybe that's the thing that's selling me on this is it's dark red, I'm a little biased, but I like the orange trim as well. That's really cool. The back part, if I were to keep driving here, you can see that it actually says there on the container part, caution with like a little keypad there for you to put in the pin to open this whoops all right here you've got another caution some other mechanism i don't really know i like how it's got the crate piece there uh on the inside which you saw before from the actual build but it's in black so i think that's cool on top you've got the sand blue trim that continues over and i like the slopes just the whole color of this it looks really cool little lights there and again on the back no license plates or anything on here but uh, you've also got some like air slots, I guess, uh, for them to breathe and also that part there. So what you can do is you can actually remove the entire thing, completely removable. It sits on these studs. I did not put that back properly. So here's the Atrociraptor crate and this actually lifts up and then you can actually slide this on out. And what you're meant to do is you can see the two spots. That's actually the exact spots where the Atrociraptor's feet would actually sit. So you can, of course, you'll have to wait for the combination video, but you can actually put two of them on the inside there and close it up completely. So that's really cool that it can house two of these. I'm not sure what other dinos can fit in here. Maybe that's an idea that I can do for all of the dinosaur from Jurassic World Dominion when we do that video once I have all the sets. And in case someone was curious, there is nothing going on in the inside there. I just realized you could also chuck figures in here as well if you want to lock them inside. Here's Owen Grady, and so far I've looked at three Jurassic World Dominion sets on the channel. All three have had the same outfit. So a little frustrating. I think that there's no variations between a lot of the sets. This is just, it's already appeared in previous Jurassic World sets as well. It's nothing new even for the movie. So it's just kind of a letdown, I think. Um, but again, the face is perfect. They have captured his likeness, I think, so well. Uh, the only, I guess, variant here is that he comes with a revolver in this set. And uh, on the back, he does have this smile. Here's Claire Deering. And uh, it's interesting. I noticed that when I was looking back at the other view, this looks very special. Spotted, and that is I don't know what's up with the printing there, but that dark red is not sticking to the teal um, Anyways, 
the face i don't know if it necessarily works too well for her. i've never been too big a fan i think for it uh, but she does have the scared expression on the back and some back torso printing and this actually isn't exclusive to the set either it appears in two other sets here is rain delacourt and unfortunately this also isn't exclusive to the set the figure is the exact same one that appears in the set that combines with this. So not only is this the same outfit, but same with Owen. So the fact that they're the same outfits and the same characters, I just really don't like that. I think back to like Ninjago and how the sets from January, they connected from January and March. But anyways, you wouldn't get any repeats of the Ninja. So I don't know what's going on here. I wish that they had the same thought process here or at least give him a variant something but anyways he comes with a trank gun there with uh, the guns from the lego movie and then also a yellow needle i really love the leg printing i wish that it was dual molded but i still think it's great from the front the torso printing is really detailed there and i like the trench coat uh the hair here really like that in reddish brown removing that you've got a like a great face print you could actually remove that tattoo if you want it looks more like a snake to me maybe it's a dinosaur i don't know but uh, like good looking face there i think for different uh purist figures and custom figures he does have this sort of menacing smile here on the back he's got some more back printing and here is Sayona Santos. And honestly, I was really looking forward to this figure. I thought that the hair here in tan was great. The outfit is just really modern looking. And I think it looks really cool. Except, look at the printing. It's so bad. What? Like, they can't... They need to fix printing white on black. Like, it's so jarring to me. Like, look at the difference there. It just does not work at all all oh, it's such a disappointment but the same build here that rain had again the hair here isn't that common i don't think in tan uh but you could see here on the torso very detailed when i remove the hair she is actually using leia's head from star wars she's got a smirk here on the back and some back torso printing well there you have it everyone that is my review of the t-rex and atrociraptor dinosaur breakout and honestly i really like the set i like the fact that it can connect with the other one and the value of it, I was really expecting it to be like $99.99, but $20 cheaper, honestly, than the one that I had in my mind. So the fact that there's that much of a gap between this set and the other big play set that we've already looked at, I don't think that's a good thing for the big play set. I think this is actually really fairly valued. You're getting like two exclusive dinosaurs in the set, one exclusive figure. And I, I think that it's really fun as well that you can connect it. I'm excited to do that and show you guys that in a future video. This is set number 76949, the Giganotosaurus and Therizinosaurus attack. It has 810 pieces and will be retailing for $129.99 USD or $169.99 Canadian. And I like there's just so much going on here. It's a playset mixed with these two really crazy looking dinosaurs. So let's go ahead and let's jump into things. So here are the two dinosaurs included, and I actually have never had a dinosaur to this scale, and this is the first time. They all come in the bags individually, except for the claws there. But what I found most interesting was as I was building it, this is its own toy. Like, let's say a kid was going out, they wanted to get uh, just this dinosaur on their own, they'd be paying $15, $20. I think that's honestly, I know that a lot of people say these sets are overpriced, but when I look at this and I see how solid of a build this is and how much you could do with it, I, I came to the realization that, you know what, I think they're actually all fairly, pretty, pretty fairly priced sometimes because of this. And I think that this is an example of that with this set, especially because you're getting these two dinosaurs. And it's so cool. Like the printing on some parts is a little bit scuffed, you'll notice on mine unfortunately but i'm including them both here so that you could see just the scale between the two of them and you're meant to have them battle um but and i assume maybe that's where all these scratches are coming from as well all the scars are from the claws that's just an assumption again we haven't even seen these guys in trailers or anything but i love the color here with the black and how it mixes into the olive i think that looks great and again you could see just some of the pattern it's a little bit scuffed and if i turn around i think it's on this side mostly you could see just how some of the black there is kind of coming on through and you could see how the the light yellow or is that tan i'm not sure it's not really printed 
properly. But again, both sides are different, like the scratches and everything. They're not the same if you continue to flip them around. Really, really cool. Now, what's also neat about this is the heads. They're actually on these ball joints. So I'm going to move that out of the way there. You can see they're on these ball joints. That adds a lot of articulation there. The back tails are actually able to turn a little bit, but they can spin all the way around, and you can actually open the mouth. And of course, like all the other dinosaurs, if you want, you can put a minifigure inside and close the mouth up a bit but uh, yeah pretty cool the little arms i believe those are just the same ones for like used for raptors but these legs are really huge and uh, i really like them again there's a lot of articulation that you can kind of put there you can have like one foot sort of stepping up i really like that now here this one's a little smaller but it's really interesting i think mean, i like the shape of this head and you could see there's like a bit of a beak there but what's interesting is that it's got like the regular raptor mouth there that it's using which i have a problem with i think that's fine um and again this too is on a ball joint so you can kind of rotate it up and down but also turn it side to side the tail here is able to turn a little bit left and right you can see how the pattern actually continues through there i love the dark red scales and everything maybe that's fur sort of like the pyroraptor but uh, the legs and everything look at the claws i like how like the one on the inside is actually up these hands are actually exclusive here and they have these brick built little claws so you can scratch at uh, the other dinosaurs that you want to have this fight up against so i think that's really neat and really interesting honestly uh you do have some spots there to actually have someone sitting if you want to you could put i guess something like a build there as well on top here is the biosyn lab and i'm assuming that's what it is given that uh, a lot of the equipment on the inside you'll see as well as that's the name on the outside so it says biosyn genetics there on that sticker that you put there but this is just giving you a little bit of a 360 so that you could see everything inside um but yeah, it, it's an interesting sort of build. It reminds me of the Malibu Mansion. You'll see as we go through here from Iron Man 3, just the white, the big panels, as well as some of the color schemes here on the inside. It uses like the light green for different sections for like on the side here. You've got uh, different parts and it just, it gives me that sort of vibe. I don't know what it is, but all right. So now we're down here on the ground floor and you could see the main entrance. You've got the one door there that can open. You've got some glass panels. Again, better look at the sticker on the side here you've got some plants as well as a spot to like charge your walkie talkies i believe uh so that's kind of interesting and again the lime green like i mentioned before you've got these plants and it's got a same sort of aesthetic that you'll see with the tower if i turn it around here you've got some tall like almost like bamboo growing you've got a little security camera that you can actually rotate left and right not up and down but over here you've got like the garage entrance which is it, it's interesting you've got a little bit of a ramp there for you to actually take the buggy that is included and park it on inside now it's a little large i don't know if maybe some other vehicles from other sets you can put in the garage here but uh, it can drive on out you might get a little stuck depending on how you've built uh the trees on the outside the plants but uh, the archway as well, it's a little weak. Like, don't push down on that. I noticed that as I was building. It's not the greatest build there, how it's kind of just hanging over. But uh, just don't push down on it, I guess. Over here on this side, you've got like a fueling up station, I believe. I'm not sure, like, what is this? Is this a safe? Maybe it is, uh, like, that's actually what you're, like, pushing in. I, I don't know. There's, like, a button there as well as this glass part. But then this fuel section here, you've also got this tank of something included. So, yeah, you've got a little... I guess workshop on this little buggy not entirely sure what it is but again lime green in here v very stark color I guess you see what I did there now on the inside you can see you've actually got a panel there with a sticker sort of analyzing the DNA same there on the other side and here you've got this really cool little lab section where you'd actually take the amber cube that appears in a couple of the different sets and you stick the needle on inside, of course, removing the blood from the mosquito, and then you can analyze it in different sections there. So you've got a microscope little build there at the side, as well as a little stool to sit at. Also the wrench from the garage, didn't mention that before. But here you've got some eggs here actually uh, being grown, which is really cool. You could lift that up, of course, and remove the dinosaur eggs if you want to. There's no printing on them or anything like they're hatching, but it's still cute that we've got this little lab build there. 
Up here on the second floor, you've actually got two different, like, scanners, I guess, to read the dinosaurs. Now, what's strange is on the back of the box, it has it that Dr. Wu is looking out the window at the uh, actual dinosaurs, like, walking past. So, you could have it close up, you can have it further away there, but it's cool that they kind of kept... Uh, I guess the size and the height of this building so that you can look out the window and you're still angle able to actually angle the dinosaurs so that like they can look on inside there. I think that's a really cool little feature there that they kept in mind while building this. Uh, to the right, you've actually got a little coffee machine and you've also got these three pyramid pieces there that are, I guess are meant to be different amber. Uh, I not sure different things that they have collected it's almost like a shelf of display so yeah not quite sure what's there then you've got a little computer they're actually analyzing the mosquito as well as a desk with some coffee in that mug and you could take Dr. Wu there and actually sit him down in his lab. You've also got this skull there, a little dinosaur skull in the back, which is cool. They're using the Overwatch gun there to build that. The seat can actually go 360 there if you remove him. Dinosaur experts, paleontologists, let, let me know. What, what dinosaur do you think that is there? Taking a bit of a step back here, you could see the building from above. You've actually got the helipad there with the letter H. And what's cool is you've got these little slope parts, which will come in handy in a second. There's no way to like get on top. Like there's no ladders or stairs actually leading your way up. I guess that's fine. You've also got this little tile there actually connecting the roof to keep it a little bit more sturdy. Um, but here you've also got a ladder to get up to the helipad. Here you've got a satellite that could spin fully around 360. But of course, like most Jurassic World sets, you have to have a helicopter. So you can actually put that on inside. And what's interesting is that I, I have no clue. I guess the way that the slope goes on the inside there, it actually attaches uh, and, and locks in there which is so smart to me uh they sit loosely on the studs but because of these slope pieces here it gets stuck on the inside there and doesn't allow you to move that so i think that's really cool that it does lock that in place take a note of the whole size and scale here I i'm not too big a fan the helicopter is huge compared to this lab like i think scale wise it just doesn't really make sense you'll see the helicopter like it's a good build it's very unique but scale and everything what's going on there <laughs> gonna be honest with you when this set first leaked uh from target and i saw the tower i honestly was like it, it doesn't look good it's actually my favorite build out of the two it's really cool i love the grass and everything that's going on there at the bottom you've got like different plants uh, as you spin it around you could see that you've actually got a bit of an interior like it's a lot deeper than any of the sections in the other build um but you've got a little ladder it doesn't reach all the way down i, I guess what you could have I'm just guessing here. I've never actually tried this, but is it the height to actually reach that? It's not exactly, and I'm not sure like where you would put the tower, but you, you could kind of like climb from here to there. Uh, but again, how would you get to the roof of the main building? I, I don't really have the answer to that. But it's still cool. You've got like a little antenna there on the outside and the rail guard there and a lower sort of, I don't know if this is meant to be a rail, like that's definitely a rail, but here is where it gets really cool. So before we take a look at the inside and you can see on the top, there's nothing special going on there at all, but it's still cute. I, I broke the bottom part there. Don't tilt your tower guys. Sorry, unintentional Fortnite reference. It, it just slipped out. Anyways, what you're meant to do is you take any of the dinosaurs and you, they, at least the ones that are tall enough, and you have them like bite onto the ledge there. And what you can do is if you remove this peg here and you slide it out to the left this way, you can actually bite down and break a part of the tower. So let me just show you that and reload that. So what you do is you can see underneath there, you've got this peg and it's loaded all the way to the right. You lift it out to the left. It can actually sit there a little bit, but then just with a little touch, it will fall down and the glass will come forward. And just because I'm sure someone was curious here, I could show you it, what it looks like from underneath there. You can get a bit of a better look and you just pull the peg out and you drop it on down. 
Here on the inside, you could see that there's this little panel there. I guess that's maybe to operate and, I don't know, use the antenna. I, I really don't know. But you've got two screens there, and they're really difficult to see. So what I'm going to have to do, unfortunately, the roof does not... I guess it does, actually. Oh, it's just attached there. I, I was going to say it does not actually come off, but it does. It's only attached there on the two studs. But you can kind of see a better look there. You've got uh, actually a look at the tower there um of like the moon in the back with some trees and then over on this side you've also got uh, a dinosaur actually in the forest that this takes place in so yeah I, I don't know it's cool that you've got these little panels there again you can this is what it looks like from this side when the wall is actually broken down and here's the helicopter I actually really like this build because this part here is a really unique idea that you build this sort of flap and you push it on down and the stud just fits in there perfectly you've got these little turbines on each side and the propeller actually spins really well and I can spin it a lot faster there uh, if you want to and I love how it's like complete like no studs are showing it is completely flat there with the tiles you've also got the yellow there on the end so that you can make a really cool looking circle here in the front you do have the cockpit there do helicopters have cockpits I think so I, I don't know anyways uh, you take Kayla here who I believe is a pilot just because she's in in the other set with the plane and you could sit her on inside there you've got the different levers you could really put anyone in here but close it on up and then over here in the back you've got the biosim logo there and I like the pattern how you've got the black and I think those are the gray part is meant to be the windows of the helicopter but this actually is lifted up there and you could actually tilt this on out it's not coming out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift from this other side here both sides lift up and you push this out and I'm not sure at all what this is meant to be we don't have a description for the set obviously it's not listed on any shops or anything but uh, you've got like a needle there as well as a lever for something let me know if you've got any ideas for what this could be I don't think, like, you, you can't put a figure on in there. Not with that, anyways. I think if it's loose, maybe you could kind of fit them in if you put them in sideways like that. You can kind of close it up. Um, I'm sure if, there we go, pushed him in a lot more. So you, you could put a figure on inside, but you, you really got to squish them down. On the back here, you've got another propeller there. And again, you have nothing, nothing else really going on. It's a little compact helicopter. I say that, but in terms of the scale with the rest of the set, it's, it's quite large. And here is the buggy, and it's really small. Um, it's fine. It drives smoothly. You've got a little pickaxe there in the back for you to go mining and get the different amber crystals and all that. You've got two little handles, I guess, to attach the minifigure to would like to hold on to. You've also got a spot there to put them there if you want you can take any of them and just sit them on inside and you're good to go here is old dr alan grant and he is actually exclusive to this set he doesn't appear in any of the other jurassic world dominion sets as of yet i'm not sure if there will be more but i really love uh the torso it's it's like a nice little homage to what he wore in the first movie the fedora piece in dark brown, I believe, is a first here, and it looks really great. Maybe it's coming in a minifigure series or something, but I know I don't have one in my collection. The headpiece, though, it is actually a brand new print, I believe, and I could definitely see this being used for a ton of different people in the future for, like, Star Wars and even Harry Potter, but it works pretty well there, I think, for him. Um, there's no second face print, of course, because you can't have that with the fedora. Got some back printing there. But overall, like, it's a solid figure, and I'm so, I was so scared that he wasn't going to be in a set. So I'm glad to see here that he does appear in this one. And here's Dr. Henry Wu. Uh, he and Alan Grant are the only exclusive figures to the set. So it's cool that he is included. I assume he is meant to be the villain again here. And I really like the face print. I don't know if it necessarily fits him. I, I'm not too sure, but again, I don't want to get into the skin color debate, but a lot of people don't like this being used uh, for him, but I, I think that it's fine. At least Lego's trying to be a little more diverse, I guess, but 
I'm not sure if it works, but the jacket there that he's got, it, it's kind of interesting. You can see how it's sort of wooly. Maybe the printing should be in dark brown and not all in black, but uh, spinning it around here on the back, you've got some more lines there. And if I were to remove the hair, you could see that he's got uh, the smirk there on this face and spinning it around here on the back, he does have this sort of upset expression there. And I do wonder again, same with Alan Grant, if this is gonna be used for anyone else in the future. Again, Star Wars, maybe if they bring back Indiana Jones, I could definitely see this being used there. Continuing through with the legacy characters here, we have Ellie Sattler, and it's it's cool that she's back, and unfortunately, she's not exclusive to the set with Ian Malcolm, so I don't know how I feel about that. The set's just kind of like, I, I, I get it's fine, it's a big set and everything, but it takes away the exclusivity of a couple of different sets, so I don't know how I really feel about that, but again, like the face, I think works really well for, I don't know about the hair color, maybe mm, would have gone with like light tan but even dark tan i think would have worked to match uh, the rest of like her eyebrows and that but i like the torso printing there if i were to remove the hair you could see what that looks like it's so detailed and again how she has it tied up very reminiscent to the first film which i really like she does have the scared expression there on the back and i like the back torso printing as well uh, I was really hoping that Owen Grady in this set would have that cool plaid and the jacket from the 4 Plus set, but nope, unfortunately not. Uh, this is not anything new, even for Jurassic World Dominion. I, I don't believe even with the legs or the torso, but if it is, it's it's like it's so repetitive at this point with the gray shirt, same face and everything, which looks great, and I'm glad they've been using that for Star Lord as well. Spinning it around here on the back, you can see it's pretty detailed there, and he's got this upset expression there as well. Here's Claire Deering. Looks good. Fine figure again. It's no variant, unfortunately, for her. Um, it's the exact same one from the plane, and uh, I don't know. I I'm sad that it's not anything new, but you'll see that I guess in the other reviews. Uh, the face. I don't. I guess does that work for her? I think the facial expression does. I don't know about the lips, but she does have this scared expression there on the back as well. You could see some back torso printing too. And also from the plain set is Kayla Watts. And she's got a really cool like jacket printing there. I like that. And whatever she's got underneath, I think that looks cool in sand green and like the dark green pouches and all that, even like the texture there in dark green. We do see her in the last trailer there on the back torso there. She's got some more printing as well as she uses the Black Widow hair here. And if I remove this, you could see she's got a bit of a smile and on the back, this sort of upset expression. Well, there you have it, everyone. The Giganotosaurus and the Therizinosaurus attack. Again, if I said it wrong, comment down below. Um, again, help me with the YouTube algorithm. Correct me. It's fine. I don't mind. I personally think with the price, I, I don't have the biggest problem with it. I know that that might be a bit controversial, but I think with the figures here that you're getting, I know that some of them are exclusive, which is a little frustrating when uh, you are trying to get like main characters like Alan Grant. But it does take away the exclusivity of other sets as well. And I don't know how I feel about that. But overall, I think like the helicopter is actually a really good build. The two dinosaurs are fantastic. The tower is my favorite part. It's the rest of the lab that's just, it's just okay. I think that's the part that's lacking the most, honestly. Set number 76950. This is the Triceratops pickup truck ambush. It has 210 pieces and is retailing for $39.99 USD or $49.99 Canadian. Now this is actually an exclusive to Walmart, which means that you have the option to either get it at Walmart or you could buy it from Lego shop at home or Lego stores, which is where I picked up my copy. I actually spent last week, it looks like it's only online, at least here in Canada. However, I'm not sure what that is in the US. Um, it was up for pre-order, I believe at both sites. And this is my first Triceratops, so I'm excited to take a look at this set. So I like starting with the dinosaurs with each of the sets, and like I just said, I've never had one of these before. So uh, I was really shocked by just how thin uh, this part of the head was. Like, that is so thin there. I'm really shocked by how sturdy that really is. I don't think anything is new here in terms of molds, uh, but the printing, however, is all brand new. The mouth does not open. There's no closing feature. However, you can actually 
actually, if you want to, I'm gonna take the carrot stick there and actually just feed it on through so that you could see that the mouth can actually hold on to like a branch or a twig or something like that. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting if you wanted to do that. Um, and it's pretty easy to just remove. I also found really fascinating is that the legs are different sizes. The back ones are actually a lot larger. You could see just the height there, the difference between the two. So I love the pattern of this. It's really great. I think that is dark red. It's not dark brown but it looks really awesome. I love the patterns and everything. Looking at the eyes there, you can see as well, it is actually an exclusive print. And that's something we've been saying throughout all the reviews is that I really appreciate when they go the extra mile and they don't just copy the pattern, they actually design a new one. So you can definitely see that there's no scratches or marks there on that eye. On this one, you've got that. And then even here, like the whole pattern there is different. <laughs> Spinning it around here on the back, just gonna try and memorize that. It is even different here on the back. You could see the torso scratches and how they're different on that side and how that leg has some scratches there. And uh, I think, yeah, the legs in the front, they are the same, but that's fine. I will say the only complaint that I have here is that when printing on the dark gray, you can notice that it's actually a little bit faded. Like that's meant to be the tan color there. Same with here on the top. It's a little bit more faded versus the regular tan but that's fine, like that's just what happens when you print on dark gray. And the tail, it's all like one piece here. And the head can rotate, as well as just to give you a sense of like how much articulation you get with the legs. You can kind of have it stand up, however like it'll fall down. But there's a lot that you can do. You can even have it kind of lying down there if you want. And uh, on the back you do have a total of six studs. And here's the pickup truck. It's fine. It does have a play feature, which is one up over the other pickup truck that we get in a different set. Um, we are going to do a video actually taking a look at all these all together eventually, uh, closer to the release of the movie. But until then, you can go and look at that review if you want. But you'll notice here, this actually has a really cool play feature, which is what I want to start with. So what you could do is you could have either the Triceratops not moving, I'm going to hold it still, and you drive this into it and the front hood of the car actually completely lifts up, which I really think that's just such a cool play feature. So what that does is when you push on the grill here, it will move this slope piece there into this ingot that's sitting underneath and it'll launch the top of the hood. So I think that's a really cool play feature there, um, but I'm gonna close that back up. You can see the front here, just how detailed it is. I like the lights, kind of wish there was something there, um, even if it was like just enough to go up to the top of the slopes, but it's fine. The wheels, I like the wheel wells and everything like that. You do have a light there on this side, which you can remove and easily put it on the other side if you want to do that. And uh, in the back, you kind of have like a spot for a couple of different minifigures, maybe a dinosaur, but uh, none of the ones, of course, the only one in here is the Triceratops and that's definitely not fitting there. I don't like the wheel well. It's not as nice as the other pickup truck, unfortunately, the back, it's fine, got some lights there. Now on the inside, you've actually got uh, quite a bit of room on the inside, but really you can only fit one figure since they are having to steer from the center there. I just thought maybe it was important to show you what it looks like with the figures uh, sitting in the back there. Uh, you can kind of attach that if you want to, putting it inside of that hole. Now, the only other complaint that I have about this is like the colors. You can kind of see a lot in between the gaps, like you could see the red and the white there in the front. Also, like there's just dark gray there for some reason. You've got medium nougat as well. You've got the tan wheel wells. It's just a little all over the place with the color scheme. I think that like that should have been light gray, that should have been black or something like that, and that should have been dark gray. I don't know, there's just, there's a lot of weird colors here. Maybe it's meant to be mud. I don't think so. And here is the little buggy, and I'm not sure, color scheme-wise, there's not really any vehicle besides the dark green, which is from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I guess they're the ones, like, trying to, like, wrangle up all of the different dinosaurs, give them a safe home. Uh, so maybe that's where that's from. You've got a bit of, like, the bright green from that 4 Plus set, but I don't really know. Uh, it does drive very smoothly, and there's two spots for minifigures. You could put one in the front there, and then you've got Claire with the stick with the carrot on it, trying to, I guess, lure uh, the Triceratops after the buggy. Here we have Claire Deering, and it's great because she has an exclusive outfit, and she appears in a couple of other sets, and she has the exact same one on all of them, so I really appreciate this exclusive outfit, and she does have the carrot stick there in case you didn't get a better look at it from 
when I was showing it off before. But again, like I love the torso printing. I don't necessarily think the face really works for that well. That's just my personal opinion, but uh, you can see the torso printing. It's really great. It is exclusive to her, which you'll see in a second. She does have this scared expression on the back. She also got like a hood printed on the back there. And you can kind of see how they have like the lines going to show you that this is actually like a female torso because with Franklin Webb here, <laughs> Justin, uh, we actually have a different torso, but again, it's like sort of this undercover trench coat, I guess. They're maybe breaking into the facility to break the dinosaurs out. That's just my guess here, but I really love the torso printing there. Again, very detailed. Have a new face here for him, and on the back there, some more printing on there. And then if I were to remove the hair, you could see he's got this scared expression there on the back, which I think looks uh, really funny. Here's a guard. Nothing special going on. At first glance, I thought this was the same guard that appeared in the poly bag, but it's a different beanie and pants and face. Anyways, he's got a trank gun there with a yellow needle, as well as this print, I think, first came in the Jurassic World wave back in the day from the first uh, sets. And then he's got this generic face there, no printing on the back of the head, and a hoodie printed on the back. And here is the second guard included. Great, four figures in the set. Um, nothing special though going on here. We have Tom Riddle's face as well as Harry Potter's torso. So wrap your mind around that, Harry Potter fans. Anyways, the hair here is in reddish brown and he does have the same trank gun as the other guard. And then taking the hair off, you can see on the back, there is no back head printing, but he does have some back torso printing. There you have it, everyone. That is my review of the Triceratops pickup truck ambush. I think this is a fine set. I, I love that I have a Triceratops now. I have one sealed, but I've just never built it. The truck, I love the play feature. However, I think that the other truck in the other set is probably better. However, you are getting two exclusive figures in here. And like four figures, this big dinosaur for the price. I, I think it's not bad, honestly. I think it's pretty cool. Exclusive dinosaur, exclusive figures absolute win i think very solid set set number 76951 this is the pyroraptor and dilophosaurus transport it has 254 pieces and is retailing for a total of 39.99 usd or 49.99 canadian now i was actually able to pick this up from lego themselves at a store it is also available on shop at home but it is actually a Walmart exclusive. So those are the only three ways that you can get this set. I'm not sure maybe different regions may not have a Walmart, so you can get it alternative ways. But again, Lego will have it. And if you want to, I actually have affiliate links for the first time linked down below if you want to buy them if you are in the US or Canada. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into things. Here is the Pyro Raptor, and we're going to start with this because it's the exclusive dinosaur in this set. Uh, the Dilophosaurus appears in other sets in the past, and I like that we have the dinosaur. I like that it's a new one and everything like that. You love the feathers, or maybe I, I, there's probably a more technical term. Leave it down below correcting me, but I think they really got the colors wrong here. Now, that's not necessarily on Lego because, of course, uh, colors change between concept art that they're given and then the actual final trailers, and even in the movie, like things can change from the trailers. This, the color scheme is completely wrong. Now, I hope that down the line, maybe they return to Fallen Kingdom and Dominion in their own set, sort of like what they did with Jurassic World, getting the Indominus back. Anyways, my point with this is the color scheme is wrong, and I hope that they use this mold down the line. Very flat to me, and I don't know, it kind of needs a little bit more rounding when you look at the arms from that side. I, I don't know what it is. It's just very jarring to me to see that. It's not so bad with that arm since it's covered up, but even that leg... I don't know, I guess having the sort of indent there helps a bit, but this arm to me, I, I don't know. It also looks like a, a gingerbread sort of belt. You know what I mean by that? Anyways, the arms and everything, they are molded in place. You cannot move them. The other complaint that I have with this is that the claws could use some black printing. I think that would really add to this, as well as the teeth here, um, which you'll see with the Dilophosaurus what I'm talking about. You do have a stud in the back, which is pretty cool. And again, like I, I love the pattern and everything going on here. I like the different shades. You've got dark red and red. The dark brown and the eyes, I think, work. And same with the sand blue. It's just like the body, I think, should be dark gray. But that's just my personal opinion looking at 
and trailers and different pictures. Front part here, the mouth, this isn't new. It's come in a bunch of different uh, dinosaurs, especially in this wave, but it can open and close to that size. Now you can kind of, if you want to, you can kind of pose it halfway there, and have the mouth open like that. And here's the Dilophosaurus again, comparing it. Look at the teeth there. You've got tan teeth as well as the claws in black. So it is possible to do that, but maybe they just used the, the max amount of colors on that already with everything else going on. Anyways, I think that this is great. It's not exclusive, unfortunately. I, I think that it would have been great to get just one color different, but this is the exact same one that has appeared in sets before. And uh, this one, is, I don't know. Maybe it's just these that are wobbly because of the way that their feet are angled. But again, it's not as jarring there, the flatness. Maybe it's because of the black and it kind of takes away from that. And the claw there, but I think that this just looks a lot better. It's got the exact same mouth as the Pyroraptor there. And again, love just the printing and everything like this. But again, it's not new. And here's the car. Honestly, I think this one could be my favorite. I think it's really detailed. It's got two seats on the inside. I love just even the stickers and everything on here. I like the branding that they've got going on. It goes in line with a Biosyn from the lab, the big lab build. Again, I think it's a phenomenal set, and you'll see why in a bit. But it drives very smoothly, and the little back uh, containment unit will actually sort of turn uh, with the car and or the truck, whatever you want to call it. So, again, looks really great. I think that from the front here, I love the front grille with the lights as well as this grille build. You've got a sticker there on the front. Even how they have this piece, they're sort of adding to the detail of the windshield. I think that looks great. The slope parts here, I really like. You've also got the mirrors there so you could see behind uh, any T-Rexes chasing you. Anyways, up above, you do actually have another little grill. I don't know if it's to have like someone actually maybe holding on and, and shooting the tranquilizer at uh, the different dinosaurs. The doors actually open up to reveal the inside there so you could put figures in from the side. But of course, the top also is completely removable. And uh, before we look at the inside, I do want to show you the rest of this. So the back part there we'll look at in a second is actually removable. All it does there is sit inside. And from the back, you can see it's fine. Like you've got lights, you do have like this uh, electric sort of stick there as well as a fire extinguisher there on the side now this actually does open up to reveal this little like radar dish build that just slides in and out very easily so you just remove that there but like i showed you before you could take the top off to give you access to the rest of the inside so I have taken the two characters there and I'm going to just attach them uh, to the different studs for them to sit on the inside. So you could put the two minifigures on the inside there. So I really like that you could fit two inside. And then of course, if you wanted to as well, you could take the guard and throw them in the back or maybe throw um, Ian in the back as well or Ellie but you could just close it on up again a minifigure can actually fit on the inside and then you just take this and you put it back on top here's the part I really love which is actually why I haven't done the combining video it's because of this so you can connect it here and then this little trolley I guess in the back actually can open up and what you're meant to do is you're meant to take one of the dinosaurs and actually attach their feet there to the different stud spots. It doesn't sit perfectly, like they are a little bit loose, but this actually holds them in place and then you're meant to transport them away. I really like the different lights and everything that you've got on the sides. And then the back here, you have a little ramp there that is meant to actually work as a ramp for them to walk on up and then you close this up and drive off. Now, of course, if you notice, the feet there are actually exactly the right spaces for the studs same here with the atrociraptor that is actually the exact same stud uh, separation I guess away from each other that allows you to put this here and when we do the combining video you'll notice other dinosaurs as well can fit in here and we'll try to see which ones can and can't fit with this and here's a little dish build that you might have saw before I don't know maybe it's meant to scan for dinosaurs I, I really don't know what it's meant to do anyways here you can actually put the other trank gun if you want actually storing the two of them there in this little stand and throwing it into the back
Here's Ian Malcolm, and I really love this figure. It's fantastic. I love the torso printing, but this face printing for an old Jeff Goldblum is just really awesome. And I, I really think that the skin color as well is just so much better for him, especially comparing it to the Grandmaster from Marvel. I love it. It looks great. The only bad part here is the skin color printed on black. It doesn't really work there too well, but I think the face is really awesome. Again, perfect for a custom figure of Jeff Goldblum and uh, if you were to take the hair off here you could see that on the back he does have this frightened expression which I think is really great. Here is Ellie Sattler now she's not exclusive to the set uh, this is actually also appearing in the largest set of the wave which I don't really have a problem with since it's a retail exclusive but I think that maybe she should have been in another set just to kind of draw in people into other sets just because having the legacy sort of characters in that would do that. Anyways, nonetheless, still really great to get the two legacy characters in this one set, and I think that she looks really good. I think that maybe the hair color, maybe a little too bright. I think I maybe would have gone with a tan or dark tan, but the torso printing is really great, and same here with the face. I think that looks really great. I think they captured it pretty well for her. Spinning it around here on the back, she does have this sort of concerned or scared expression, and here's the guard included. Nothing special going on here, like the torso printing. Whether or not this is new or not, it definitely looks like something that's happened in the past. And uh, the face and hair, you know, it's fine. It's generic. Nothing too special going on here. If I were to take the hair piece off, you could see that on the back, they do have this upset expression. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the Pyroraptor and Dilophosaurus transport. Honestly, I think that this was the set that I was really looking forward to the most because of the dinosaurs and specifically the Pyroraptor. Now that sort of disappointed me and the build actually surprised me. You know, this is like another car and truck build that I've built in this whole wave and I wasn't particularly looking forward to it, but I like the color scheme and just the size of it all. I think it's really great. And the little transport in the back, I'm excited to actually combine it and see what other dinosaurs can fit in the back there. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my compilation video of all the Jurassic World Dominion sets. I'd love to hear which ones are your favorites. And then linked at the end here is also that connection, connecting video that I've mentioned a ton of times in this video. If you are interested, check that out. As well as my review of the movie, which I talk about some ideas for sets that we get for this sub-theme of Jurassic World as well as 10 sets that I'd like to see for the theme as well. I'll link all three of those videos here on screen now. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hope you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next one.